Hello, and welcome to episode three of the Infinite Backlog podcast. As always, I'm Ricardo. And I'm Todd. And on this episode of our podcast, we are going to be talking about Resident Evil 4. Now, this game uh, is sort of hard to explain because, in my experience, uh, this was my first Resident Evil game. How about you, Todd? Uh, for, well, it kind of was my first. I did try playing a couple before, and I just really didn't sort of get on with them, just sort of like the way the controls were, um, and things like that, and it just sort of didn't, I don't know, I knew the story behind them, I always did, like, it just was one of those weird things, but I never really played when I got into them, so, 4 for me was sort of like the revolution as it was for the series, and that sort of pulled me in at that point, but... It was very short-lived once five appeared, but obviously we won't get into that. What about you? <laughs> it was it was the same thing for me. Uh, the games uh, up until four never really appealed to me uh, in, a, in a visual sense. Like I understood it was creepy, it was dark. That's what they were going for. It was very horror inspired. I'm not a person that likes horror, at least not originally as a kid. I hated horror. My imagination was very active. So any any little thing like me, with death and zombies like scared me i would stay up all night so i i tended to avoid the resident evil games but as i got older um resident evil intrigued me uh, story-wise like they were they were interesting uh to me uh the characters seemed really cool and uh the release of four or four already came out on the gamecube and the ps2 and the wii version at least when i was interested in resident evil 4 at the time uh, came out like for about a year so I was looking at the game I, I was watching playthroughs I was looking at trailers all that kind of stuff for the game and I thought to myself you know what this looks like a fun game this looks easy to control uh, compared to the other games and I just went out found a used copy of Resident Evil 4 for the Wii and then I fell in love with the game how about you Todd? Uh, well, with me, it, what was it? it came out in Europe originally on the GameCube on March 18th, 2005. Wow, um, is that old? Yeah, it's 10 years old, man. Like, seriously, it just had its 10th anniversary not long ago. So, yeah. Um, and my brother was going on and on about it because he played it in the summer when he was at university. So I would have been 13 at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and he just kept going on about it, and then they end up announcing it for PS2, and with obviously extra content and everything. So I was like, oh, I, was like I need to get that game. You know, because he kept describing it, obviously I was then looked at trailers and saw obviously how it had changed and the way the gameplay was, and it, it intrigued me, like, actually got me interested. And just, because my brother's very sort of, he loves to get over the top in his descriptions and things like that, and he was like even show like doing demonstrations to me of like how you like kill things like with your melee and everything, and saying obviously about mercenaries when you play as um, Hunk and like he like snaps like the necks and stuff like that, and um, so I was like yeah I gotta get this so I got it um, for my birthday, um, no not for my birthday for Christmas and. I actually asked my mum to put it in my stocking, so when I woke up in the morning, because the stocking was at the end of our bed, I could just open it up and start playing it. So before I went down for like to open up my like the rest of my presents on Christmas morning, I was sat in my bed playing Resident Evil 4 for about four or five hours, um, just the start of the bloody game. Um, yeah. So yeah, I was 14 at that point, I think. Yeah. So it was 2005 that it was released. It was 2005, yeah. So yeah, I was yeah. I would have turned 14 when I got it. So yeah, I was 14 when that first came out. Um, and basically, I, I played it quite a lot after that. And yeah, that I just loved it really. But then you you didn't get around to the Wii time until about a year after we released, did you? About yeah, it was around 2008. Yeah, I was going to uh, say because I'm looking at the dates right now. <laughs> That's exactly what I did, just so I got my dates right for how old I would have been. <laughs> yeah. 2007 was when the re- Wii One was released, and it wasn't until a year later that I got around to it. Yeah. Um, like I said, it was a great, it was a fantastic game. Um, controls to me um, were great, but then again, I played the Wii version. Uh, it wasn't until like last year where I got the HD port uh, for the PC that I realized the controls are very difficult, not terrible, just difficult to shoot and aim. Yeah, that's the thing. The Wii, the Wii is just the reticule. If you aim the reticule and you shoot, you hit. 
Like hundred percent of the time. The thing the thing I actually loved about Resident Evil 4 is how you had to learn the angle of the of the laser. As annoying as it was, it became a skill. Yeah. And even with a really shaky handgun you could get like long distance headshots with them if you like got the shake right and you could just popped it at the right time. It was such a I don't know, it was just one of those things that was just it was just satisfactory. It was just pleasant to be able to do. Like, it, do you know what I mean? It was like rewarding, yeah. in a yeah, way. I know exactly what you mean because playing the PC version over again, like, I didn't, I didn't feel as satisfied as I was or as I did in the Wii version. In the Wii version, the reticle, reticle was always on the screen, and you usually can get a headshot real easy. Yeah. Um, with the PC version, I had to kind of relearn the game for like the shooting controls, and shooting definitely feels a lot more satisfying because when you hit, you know that you were aiming that like everything fell in fell in place at the right time, and you got that hit. Yeah. It's, you know, it's cool. It's satisfying. Exactly. And uh, that's you know that's part of the reason why the game is so great. But even on top of just like the shooting controls the way combat is is uh involved like um throughout the game melee combat kind of evolves in a kind of ridiculous way yeah initially it's just like drop uh not drop kicks you do like spin kicks to uh, roundhouses to knock people over and then later on in the game leon is throwing suplexes and crazy <laughs> wrestling moves it's, it's i don't know where that drops off but the game at some point it just it goes off the deep end. I Your don't... brother like uh, talking talking up the game, making it seem crazy. He wasn't too far off, no. in all honesty. And like he was, he, I'm, I remember see, see see as we're saying about all this stuff, and I'm remembering the game a bit more and more because I haven't had time to play it recently. Um, same as you, obviously, but we mm. don't need to because we just remember so many things about it anyway. Um, he was going on about obviously like how the enemies change. You get a new enemy throughout the game, and sort of each chapter, you always get something different or something new. Yeah. And it's the one when you go into the um, sewers of the castle, um, and there's the invisible things in the in the in the dungeon, basically. Do you remember that bit? They're basically like these, like these giant bugs, and they're in oh, the water, God, no. and you just see a shim from them. And you go round a corner, and you're in a corridor, and there's water on the floor. And you move a few steps forward, and all of a sudden it just comes flying, and you just see the water splash out. It's just like as it's running towards you, just there like shitting yourself, oh my like just God. blasting off shotgun shells, like. Ah! I just remembered those things. <laughs> yeah. My thing. What What are those things called? They're not. What are those things called uh, near the end of the game? You, you find them in the freezer. Oh, regenerators. Regenerators. Those oh, things scare the shit out of me. Seriously, but man. those bugs were also pretty scary. Yeah. You know what? People will say uh, all the time, Resident Evil 4 was the death of Resident Evil. Uh, it's not a scary game. It, you know, it, it's more action-y. But you know what? Resident Evil has moments of fear and like helplessness for like a split second. Yeah. It's got good moments. It's got some really good moments. Um, one boss battle that I remember really well was uh, Salad, not Salazar. Was it Salazar? Was the Napoleon dude? Yeah, that Ramon guy Salazar? Salazar. Yeah. Yeah. His, his right hand. Yeah. <clears throat> his when you have to fight his right hand. Oh, and, and you have to you have to do intense. it in the yeah because that's after the that's that's like you go to the dungeon and you go up and everything. Then you go to him and he drops you through the floor, doesn't he? Yeah, and then you have to fight him. Oh, that's because you have to um, knock down the canisters to freeze him, don't you? Yep. Oh, yeah. That's, Nitrogen. That's just hideous. Yeah, but that that but that boss that fight yeah. is just scary because you don't know where this thing is. When it no. pops up, it slaps you and then runs right away. It's yeah. crazy. You've got to be you know? ready to get the, uh, the the buttons like at the right time, just to back like backflip out the way. Oh, it's it's pretty tense. Also. You're just talking about um, the backflipping. Uh, Resident Evil 4 is sort of the father of quick time events. Yeah, you know? I suppose so. Cause that, it was quite big in that, wasn't it? And that was last generation. It was only really this generation that everyone started going on about everything having quick time events, wasn't it? Yeah. 
I didn't. I heard nothing about quick time events until after Resident Evil Four and God of War. But I never played God of War. No. The game I played was Resident Evil, and in my experience, every game that uses quick time events, it's always super similar to Resident Evil Four. Well, God of War had it as well, mind. I think that I think saying that they are both just just as bad as each other. Um, yeah. And in all fairness, what Resident Evil Four was, two thousand and four, wasn't it? Let's have it. E- Ah, uh, 2005. That's when it was released on the Nintendo. Oh, game. right, yeah. Um, let's have a little look, shall we? God of War series. Uh, the original first release of God of War in North America was March 22nd, 2005. So it's within the same year. So they were within the same year. In fact, well, um, it was it was within... Um, well, uh, Resident Evil 4 was a few months earlier. So yeah, it... it was first seen really in Resident Evil 4 more than anything and then God of War came along. Yeah. But I just can't believe it's so old. Yeah. Jeez, I, I mean, can't it is, In a way it's a trendsetter for like QTEs and all that kind of stuff. People complain about them but you know what? Replaying Resident Evil 4 those QTEs are always in the in a good spot. They're always placed in a good spot. They're use, either used for dodging yeah. or to keep the player invested within the game's cutscenes. Yeah. They they used in a way that you have to pay attention. Yeah, because like there are cutscenes where if you did not know that the game has QTEs, you just usually walk away from it. You'd be like, okay, this is kind of cool. Yeah. But like like the knife fight. Uh, oh, the crowds and knife boulders, fight. Oh. All those kind of stuff. Like those are cool. They keep you invested within the game. Yeah. They the developers use QTEs in a very smart way to yeah. sort of not to pad out like the boredom i guess of cutscenes yeah it was it, those it didn't it never felt annoying and it still does not feel annoying revisiting resident evil 4 yeah it's so i it's just it's just a great game like in all in all fairness yeah. though i can see why they've done like hd upgrades of it as well so i remember playing it on um the gamecube the gamecube version so i've i've got so many versions it's ridiculous um, <laughs> in fact, my GameCube is the limited edition Resident Evil 4 Silver GameCube with Resident Evil 4 written on it and everything. Because um, I'm that sad. In fact, I bought that GameCube after I'd already bought a PS3. Damn. Yeah. Like, <laughs> who buys a GameCube after they buy a PS3? Like, explain that to me. When they already own the GameCube. Like, explain that one to me. Um, there's no logic there, is there, really? Um, but yeah, I played it um, a couple of years ago on the GameCube. It just looked horrible. It actually looked horrible. It's a great game, but graphically it did not age well. Now, graphics don't matter, I think you're wrong, but when you remember a game that vividly, and you go back to it and think, whoa, you know, you know something's wrong. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, I guess in a way. I mean, I've told you this before, uh, though I... When I play the HD version of Resident Evil 4 on the PC, I don't use the HD textures. There's something about the game, how they did the HD textures, it just looks too clean to me. Yeah. When I switch it back to the original uh, textures, while they are interpolated, like, pixely, all that kind of stuff, they are darker, they look a a lot more grittier. Yeah, they are very gritty. It looks more appeasing, like, appealing to the eyes as opposed to the HD which just looks really smooth and nice yeah and I I don't know it feels it works in Resident Evil's way where it's just like you're going through like the towns it's supposed to look decrepit and, and disgusting and gross not smooth it's not, and new not, yeah not smooth and clean and yeah. all that kind of stuff it, it, it's a weird thing I, I understand where you're coming from it's probably more of a thing with like, like anti-aliasing that the GameCube couldn't do yeah uh, also depends on the TV if you play like on a CRT that game actually looks pretty good because it, yeah, it the looks... CRTs worked with uh, smoothing uh, smoothed out edges yeah it looks naturally. better on a CRT than it did on a like L- on an LED TV yeah like it's um, just ridiculous yeah but it's one of those weird things. I, I turn off the HD textures for the uh, re-release. Ah. It just looks better to me. Yeah. I know so, people will disagree. Did you ever play the, um, like, oh, what was it? The separate ways uh, thing for Ada? I did touch it. Um, it, it, it. It's so weird because I played a lot of Leon's story. I, I think I played Leon's story five times. 
Yeah. And three out of those five times, those were like right away. I played it right away. So I kind of, I would like to say I'm a master of uh, Leon gameplay on the Wii. Yeah. And I had all the, all my, my whole arsenal with Leon. You know, I had that big cachet, all that kind of stuff. I had so many weapons. I, and most of the time I just used a normal handgun, uh, you know, upgraded. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I got so used to Leon when I finally, like, toughened up and said, you know, I'm going to tackle separate ways. Go to Ada. I get my ass handed to me on a plate. <laughs> It, it was not fun. It's pretty and brutal. Yeah, to return to it. But it, what's nice about it is you it, you see all the bits from where you meet Ada. You you see what happens to after those things, like those events, and that's what's quite nice. Um, it just it just adds a bit of depth to it, and they, they only added that obviously when you got the PS2 version. It wasn't in the original. Uh, no, um, but it was in GameCube. the Wii. But it was in the Wii. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, but, in all honesty, I think the GameCube version is the superior version. Um, because it's on two separate discs, it's quicker to read the data off a small disc. So when you pause the game, it's quicker, so you still gain a bit more immersion. Because you don't have to... Some, sometimes when you pause it on like the PS2, and I've possibly managed it the same on the Wii, it's got a couple of seconds before the menu pops up or closes. A little um, bit, yeah. Whereas you don't have that on the GameCube, it's pretty much instant. Um, and, you know, when you first get captured... Um, with the Spaniard, um, uh, Luis. Yeah, and you're in the sort of in that valley at the very yeah, start yeah, of the yeah. game. Um, there's like a light mist haze in the air there, which doesn't show up so much on the PS2, but it does more on the GameCube. So you actually get better atmosphere out the GameCube version. <laughs> can I can I stop you there? Have I got it the wrong way around? No, no, I like how you notice that the mist is missing. Like, that's a super small thing to, like, miss. <laughs> like, to not even notice. It's like the thing with Metal Gear. You know the thing I've talked to you about? Yeah. If we ever get to Metal Gear, I'll explain it then. But it's, I don't want to... It's like, the, it's part of the atmosphere, it. though. You have this sort of mist through the air, so the view's a bit harder to see through the valley. It's a bit more foggy. Do you know what I mean? And that's yeah. what you want from that kind of atmosphere. No, definitely. Yes, yeah, I completely agree. Whereas it's very clean in the PS2. The, I gotta replay the HD version to maybe maybe they put it back. Maybe it's completely missing. I'm not sure. I don't know. It might have been cleaned up completely. Maybe. Maybe they thought, oh, the draw distance is gonna be shit because we're making this on GameCube. We better just make it look misty instead to cover it up. <laughs> uh, but you know what? I like that. I like how developers. But you I know, seem to remember that is hide. that is slight little differences. I think that's one of them. That's that's a really really small difference of the catch. <laughs> Most people would not catch that. Most people catch like the speed of loading and and like the pause menu screen. Like that's something to catch easy, but not the mist missing. No, no, trust me, it, that that does make a difference, man. You you may take the piss, but trust me. Yeah, you you'll believe this is me. This crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, talking about the environments uh, in Resident Evil 4, they, you know, it's so weird how they vary. How you go from, like, a small little, like, Spanish village to a castle, which, you know, that kind of makes, makes sense. Then it's you go Resident to a military Evil. base. It wouldn't be Resident Evil without a castle. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> but then you go to a military base. Yeah. And then from there, you're on, like, a secluded island, which I think is still a military base. Correct me if I'm wrong. But it, it those, those are, like, four different areas that are pretty like different and well, it's crazy how they all like met like stick together and all that kind of stuff yeah see that's the thing i that's one thing also i liked about resident Evil 4 is that in a lot of resident Evil, it's just in there's a lot of backtracking you're just in yeah. like one place for the like, most of the game you need to go all around it and yeah there's 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 a thing to that obviously you need to go back and forth it's about exploring the place you're into the fullest you know yeah but i like kind of the i know it's linear in more ways because you haven't got like they're all quite linear in some ways you can only go to certain places once you got certain things if that makes sense but Resident Evil 4 it's always got more of a constant progression kind of feel yeah than the others um there's always only one way to go basically you, you know and you don't need to go somewhere to get something backtrack all the way through it tends to loop round to where you need to be yeah if that makes sense yeah, yeah. Um, I know exactly what you mean. It's, like, you gotta in other, play the game to understand. Yeah, in other words, it was basically you need to go to a room, get a key, go back through the same rooms and corridors you came through to get where you need to use it. Whereas in Resident Evil 4, 
you'll go to where you need to go to get a key, but you won't go back the same way. There'll usually be another route round to get back yeah. to where you need to be, so it's not always the same areas being reused so much. Um, and I like the variation they had because I don't know. It's it's just one of those things you don't really notice it until you really think about it. Like, although the environments are different, which I completely agree, it's a nice thing to have. They're all very similar at the same time. Yeah, they are. They definitely There's, are. It doesn't ever. It feels like you're going different places because obviously it does in the story. But I feel like when you're in Salazar's castle, it feels like you're in more places than different places than you are for the rest of the game. Because you yeah. got you got the sewers, you've got the mine area, got the, the hedge mines, maze. You got the hedge maze, like the grass area. You, do you see? What I mean, that castle alone has most of the game in it. That's true. Do you know what I'm saying? True. Like the island just feels like the village did. A little you bit, know? except the enemies can now shoot at you depending on who it was. They they were more equipped, well equipped than they, the uh, villagers. They were assholes. Um, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. the, the the main place that stood out to me was the castle. Yeah. Because it had know, so many me, different environments. And you had to actually play as Ashley. Yeah, there's, there's that. I don't know, for me, it was definitely the island. There's something about the island. It, it just felt a lot more dangerous than any other area. There were also the regenerators there. That's where I think you first were introduced to them. Yeah, So that doesn't help. No. <laughs> Those things scare the shit out of me. They still do. They still give me a little bit of a chill. <laughs> uh, but back onto the game. Uh, I think this game, more than any other game I've played, it feels like a really good adventure, you know? Like, there are games you go on an adventure and you play it, and it's like, okay, I was on an adventure there. But for this game, I always felt like this was, like, a true adventure. Like, I, I, when I play Resident Evil 4, I don't want to stop. No. Other games, I can stop. Resident Evil 4, there's something about that game that I don't ever <laughs> want to stop playing. Uh I and think I it's I think it's the way they ramp up the encounters. Yeah, like maybe. every encounter you have, not necessarily just like mobs, because that's a, every sort of major encounter you have is different, and it also ramps things up throughout the game. Very first boss, Leviathan in the lake. Oh shit! Yeah, I was gonna say Eligante, but that's second. Yeah, and then you've got him because he's in the warehouse, isn't he? Yeah. Well, no, he's Is in that him? little plaza that you fight, uh, that you uh, go, that you come across originally. It's weird. What? There's a little plaza that you fight the the giant in. The giant? Uh, yeah. The whale thing. I'm not talking about the not the. That, not the that's Leviathan, isn't it? Yeah, that's the Leviathan. I'm yeah. talking about the giant. The big oh one. yeah, yeah, the troll. Yeah. Yeah, the troll. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, I don't class that as a boss. Just. Because I'm stupid, um, but yeah, that's that's another major encounter as well. Sorry, that's my yeah. What happens right? At, I think, if my memory is correct, happens right after the Leviathan, after that the, the uh, section of after him. If not, area. yeah, it is it is after him, isn't it? Because then after you fight the troll, you then come across the um, first last Plagueis enemy, don't you? <sighs> oh shit! You know what those I think. those things those sc things scare me too. <laughs> and, it's it's easy to get around them, like depending yeah. on what kind of equipment you have. But it's just like, god damn, I hate those things. Yeah. Especially in the castles. Those fuck, <laughs> fuckers. Um But then after that you've got the that that big guy, I can't remember his name. Um, who you first run into in one of the houses in the village. Um Or as Leon puts it, the big cheese. Yeah, the big cheese. The big um cheese. that fight is amazing. I That's love a great it. Fight, yeah. Like when you have to, first you have to shoot the shit out of him to get, take cut his legs off, and then he starts swinging from the rafters. The whole place is on fire. It just creates such an atmosphere. Like it just feels amazing. It sounds like a final boss, but this is like the third guy you fight too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it only gets better from there. Like it, it really does. It yeah. So I just think the way they ramp it up throughout the game like that it just makes it all the more interesting um and i think one of the one of the worst bits in the game for me not worse than like i mean like suspense wise mm -hmm. is when you're trapped in the house with louis louis 
you remember Louis Sarah? Oh, oh yeah, him? yeah. That that scene's actually really good. I like that, that a lot. That is so good, that bit. That is so tense. They're all coming through the windows. They're all coming up. They're attacking the place. Um, you've got to hold them back. You've got to block the windows up and everything. You know what? That's so weird because I remember at the time when the game was released, more, I would say, more towards the Wii one, that's the one scene I would always see. But now when people talk about Resident Evil 4, I, that ba- rarely comes up. Like, really? That's a really classic scene. Yeah, it is. That's so weird. I don't know. In some ways, it's not very memorable, though. It can be very forgettable, I suppose. I don't know, because like, this is where you, you interact with an ally that can also hurt the enemies. Yeah. Um, it's you know it's a standoff. You've got no. You can't really go anywhere. I don't think you can actually exit the house. No, you can't. You have to just blockade it and hope for the best. Yeah. And you have to live off what ammo you've got and hopefully pick up some from the enemies. Yeah, it's very like old zombie uh, movie inspired. Yeah. I want to say Dawn of the Dead, but I've never seen the complete Dawn of the Dead movie. So. <laughs> I want to say it's from that movie, like they, they were inspired, but I can't say. I I was going to say, but I can't remember if, if I'd be right to say it, because I haven't seen that yeah. film for a very long time. Just been added to Netflix, though. But we won't oh. go on to that. <laughs> I think it was, or it's on Amazon Prime, but I won't get into that. That's something else. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that bit's really good, and the fact that after that, you only have a choice of, you have a choice of two paths to go down. I forgot about that. Ah, oh, it's just, so crazy. One of them has two trolls, or is it one? Oh yeah, I, I can't remember that one. But there's you have to shoot the boulders down to hit it, and you have to try and shoot the locks off the door to get through. But then um, there's also like treasures up in the rafters that you need to shoot down. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. Um, or if you go the other way, you get quite a good bit of treasure. But you have to fight two crazy bitches in in an arena. It's horrible. Wow, they take so much ammo. Like either way is just torturous. Like the troll is the better option. I don't know. I I, I know I did both. The I've definitely tro- done the... both within my playthroughs of the game. Yeah. But I think I may take. Uh, maybe it's because I have a better shotgun. I think I may have taken the sisters. Oh no, it's the, the, the giants. The troll's the easier one because you don't have to fight it. I guess I don't remember. I gotta replay it now because I gotta get up to that <laughs> bit. <laughs> oh, shit. Trust me, the troll's the easier option. Hmm. You'll believe me one day. I'll believe you. <laughs> I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna really do it. That that, that sounds like such a cop out though, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. Oh, ah well. It's so crazy. There's so many different ways to play the game too. I've seen playthroughs where they don't use any guns as opposed you know except for the exception of like certain areas where yeah. you only have a gun yeah like I've seen so many speed runs only, of this game you know it's insane so many good ways to play this game and it always it's just it's just a really unique experience like Resident Evil 4 the whole thing yeah through and through it's great but uh it seems like we're running out of time here oh with, wow uh, alrighty games. Yeah. Bloody hell. It goes quick when you talk about Resident Evil 4. Oh, man. It's, it's a great game. But... Uh, 30 minutes really isn't enough to talk about, like, our experience with this, but... What you put know you what? off the series? <clears throat> hmm? What put you off the series? What put me off? Have you like, been put off at- the series yet? After 4? No, because... Resident Evil 4 is a kind of popcorn-y action flick. That's what it is. That's yeah. what it, it, it slowly yeah. became. Yeah. And... Resident Evil 5, it has issues, but it still is within that vein of popcorny action flick. And Resident Evil 6, I played Leon's story first. That's the only story I actually played. It's still very much like that. Say, you know, it's I... still very popcorny, actiony. I like that. It's it's fun to me. Personally, yeah. I kind of like the more actiony oriented Resident Evil as opposed to the horror Say, oriented Resident I Evil. I personally, yeah. See, I personally loved 4, couldn't stand 5, played it a couple of times, really just couldn't get into it. The reason being, the thing with 4, is you're on your own. Even when you're with Ashley, you're on your own. She can't do anything. Do you know what I mean? She can't do anything, you have to protect her. Resident Evil 5, there's always someone watching your back. AI or friend, there's always someone watching your back. Do you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to worry so much. 
But I would say that's more of a conversation to have if we ever talk about Resident Evil Five. Six, well, yeah, of course. Re- Revelations. I'm and, not sure. I haven't played that. And that that did kind of put me off. Yeah, I guess. You know? Yeah, I can see where that comes from, but and my thing is more of like the genre horror right? in daylight thing. It's not even horror. It's not even scary. Like you see everything that comes at you. This is true. Yeah. But like I said. We can talk about that once, yeah. that's we, if we me. ever get there. That's just me being a dick. <laughs> but I'm happy to admit that. It's not a problem. That's fine. <laughs> so, we're, uh, this is the end of this podcast. On our next one, I'm not sure what we're going to talk about. We'll it's decide Probably to. not Resident Evil 5. <laughs> no, no, please no. <laughs> it's probably not that. But oh, love of God. <laughs> it should be fun. I'll see you guys later. See you later. Thanks for listening.